So, good afternoon or morning, maybe to the guys out in the States and Canada. Welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. So, here we are, ex Mr. Tools. We're back in the hand tool room. So, today we're going to look at smoke shades. I had a couple of emails from guys that have said, got some smoke shades, got problems setting them up. How do I sharpen them? I get chatter. I get. So, we're going to go through some of those problem areas with you this afternoon. That's my aim. Okay. So, hopefully, we'll explain everything. If not, you know this is live, you can do your questions. It'd be lovely to hear from you. It makes us feel that actually we're doing this live. Okay. Um, we've got Colwyn doing your questions. Ben sit on here on the computer as well, doing the camera operating, trying to get all the shots for you. If there's things that aren't clear, we'd love to know. Likewise, if you've got questions from things we've done this week, maybe last week, let us know. Again, they can answer, especially this week. Okay. So we're going to look at some smoke shaves. So Got a number of different smoke shaves here. Traditionally, what is a smoke shave? It was traditionally a cart maker, wheel maker's tool. Now, outside town here in Collerton, so 10 miles away, we actually have probably one of the best cart wheel and wheel manufacturers still surviving in the UK. So Roland, Mike and Greg, all right, so Mike being the father, absolutely fantastic to go and see. If you're in that sort of business, you don't just do a little bit of woodwork. They do metal work, they do a bit of everything. So it's quite amazing. So that really leads nicely to, if I go over here, so you might have something like a spoke for a, a wheel. You've got your tenons either end, you'd shape it. So your spoke shave traditionally would have been a wooden spoke shave. So these would have been made actually by the people wanting them, the cart makers. They would have made their own wooden handle. They maybe did their own metalwork, or they would definitely would have known a blacksmith. And we're going back a couple of hundred years. So they would have had their blade put in, two metal spikes that come up, so they drill two holes. The spikes, if you look at them, they tend to taper up, a bit dovetail shaped, so getting narrower as they come up. That provides attention to the blade. Quite amazing when you consider this thing still about. Now, you see these lot of flea markets and whatever, still very usable. Quite a nice tool to have. The nice thing with wooden ones is you can adapt the shape. Normal problem with these, the blade section. Tends to get a bit worn out over the years. It's been sharpened. So check that bit if you're going to buy second-hand ones. Now, lots of modern spoke shapes tend to be cast iron, a cast component. So these vary a little bit. going to go through different manufacturers so you can see why they vary. And I will tell you in here, if Ben just goes back to the overall shot, let's just have a look at the room. In here, we use a lot of spoke shapes. So we've got our Windsor chairs that we've made over the years. So we've got our seat there, an armbow, back bit. So we've got one on the bench that we were playing with when you sort of joined us. We've got a seat for shaping. We've got a curb bit. We've got top rail goes up in here, look. A bit of one of the tables I've been making. But we use lots of spoke shapes right down to things like our armbows, back bows. So this actually is armbow, goes around. Quite nice, but this all needs cleaning up. So our spoke shaves get a lot of work in here. And we've got different spoke shaves, different manufacturers, and believe it or not, I love intermixing them. Why? You'll see, hopefully, as we go on, we're going to answer that. So if we go back down to here, we've got a couple of spoke shaves. Now you get flat ones, you get round ones. So we've got our cast iron section. Let's look at one to start with. Now on here, this is a copy, really, of a Stanley one. You have a couple of little thumb prints on the back. I prefer, if I'm using a spoke shave, to push it away from me. I find it more controllable. It's a bit more difficult to pull it towards you. It isn't impossible, but there are certain tasks you might actually have to pull this towards you. You might be limited on access into that workplace. So, got that there. On the top here, we have basically what is your chip breaker. So, your spoke shave is a miniature hand plane. So, we can take our chip breaker off. We have our blade. This blade is actually beveled down, so the back of the blade is on the top. We turn it over, you've got your sharpened edge coming down, so they are presented upside down. On here we have fine adjusters. Not every spoke shape has fine adjusters. If it has fine adjusters, it can make life so much easier for setting up. On your spoke shape, inside, let's just come back, grab my pencil, I knew it was there. In here we have 
your mouth section, and in reality, your frog section, a bit like your hand plane. So your frog is in there that's going to see to them. In the bottom, you have your mouth, comes all the way through, so that's your hole. You have your sole underneath. Quite easy to put back together. Clamping on the top. Don't go mad clamping these down. Once you've got your adjustment, then tighten up. There's no point in over tightening it to start with. You're never going to move the blade forward and back. So don't need too much pressure. We turn it over. What have we got? Now, we're just going to support this. Um, we found this quite beneficial to show you. I can get something to sit in there. That's better. Now, if I bring it round, this is a flat spoke shape. And as I said, you get flat and curved. Flat section on there. If I put my little bit of wood on, it sits nice and flat. That's fantastic. Then can you just go back to... I could do here. Come around this curve. It'll get onto that. The flat will run there. Might need to angle it a little bit, but it'll do there. If I try and do the inside, the flat section, much as this is a bit long, creates a hollow gap underneath. The blade's got to protrude a lot more. That'll produce more chatter. So ideally, we don't want a flat one for the internal curve, depending on the shape of the curve. So our flat section spoke shape, got that nice flat there, does have certain rolls. If we compare that now, something there, bring that round. This is curved. So this has got quite a curved section. So my little bit of ash that I'm holding, I can rock up and down. That's quite a shape. Definitely a lot of movement. I don't know if we go there. Look at that. A lot more shapes. This is quite curved as a spoke shape. So, first one done. Next one then. Let's have a look at these. So, these are Lionel Nelson ones. First thing missing on here, no fine adjuster. Next thing though, let's do the same thing we just done. We'll take the blade out. So, there's no holes, just one blade. Blade quality, different thickness. Um, does thickness play a part in it? Oh, traditional Stanley blade. 1.6 mil thick, I've measured it. The one we just looked at, 1.9, 3.4. So you're going up in thickness. If it's thicker, it absorbs the chatter, the vibration a bit more, it's more supported. So those things all play a part. This is an A2 tool steel, cryogenically treated. So submerged in liquid nitrogen, a bit like they do the turning tools. So it'll hold an edge a bit longer. Put it back in. We'll do the adjustment for this in a second. Finger tighten. Now, this is, and this causes me trouble in here when we've done certain things with the chair courses, because is that flat or curved? That's actually the flat one. Okay, let's bring it up a bit. No movement, nice and flat. Why do I say it causes me trouble? Because actually, there is very little curve on this Lion Nelson spoke shape. Uh, one of the things I know you can do with this, you can even actually alter the curve yourself by changing the grind on it. So you can actually take some abrasive to it. You could change it. But personally, quite nice. Smaller mouth means smaller shaving. These aren't designed to be taking a massive, big, heavy cut. It's about refining, light cuts at the end. So less there. So we've got the low notion. There are test ones. So we're back to our fine adjuster. Again, just have a look at one. Chip breaker comes off the top, centre screw, hopefully. Might need to undo that a little bit, which would be unusual. Bung that wood shavings, this one, look. It's a puzzle. A bit more then. Loads off, there you go. So, slightly different blade shape. Don't know if this will fit a standy one. That's going to be one, maybe one of the questions. Can you use this? No, I know the rider ones will. This possibly will. I can have a go in a minute if you like. Let's see if it will fit on. So if you've got an old Stanley spoke shape, you want to upgrade it, put a bigger, thicker blade in, that might be good. Again, bevel down. So the sharpened edge is face down. You have fine adjusters. Now, the nice thing with fine adjusters, you can angle the blade a little bit. So we tighten this up, finger tight. We can move things either side. The other thing I know with this, you get a little bit of backlash. There's a gap on here. Nothing happens. It's important to wind it down so it's pushing on the back of the blade, pushing it forward to the cut. So if you retract the blade, bring it back a bit, then take up that slot because it's not going to allow the blade to slip back as you start cutting. Curve one. Now we've got a right. 
So compared to the line Ernstone, this is a lot shallower than the Veritas. The rider one we looked at the start with the black one, bigger curve again. So we've got three different curves on there, flat one. So each main tends to do their own idea of what they do as a curve shape. Last stage shape we're going to look at is Veritas one. Got one other after this, but traditional spoke shapes tend to be clamped. Now this is unusual. This is a low angle spoke shape. In reality, this is very much like a traditional wooden one in the aspect that this has the blade set level with the body. What does that do? Actually produces a lower cutting angle sort of cut, more effectively and easier. So if I take this one apart, I can get it undone, one there, one there, our blade, that little bit. Quite a small section. It has a tapered bit on either side. You have a 25 degree and a 30 degree sharpened edge. Two lugs in underneath, these tighten up. You've almost got like a dovetail shape, so it pulls it down to the body. Now, one of the problems I know with this is if you do one side up too much first and then you do the other, it doesn't click the blade in properly. You start cutting with it, the blade will drop out. You've got to tighten them down equally, so therefore there is enough material pulling on either side of the blade to secure it. Well, it's, it's all quite easy to do. A very nice thing with this, and this will shock you, I didn't realise this until yesterday, um, which Ben sat here laughing about, because we've used these for quite a few years in here. This bit here has an adjustable mouth in reality, so you can adjust how much cut you take. I can do these two little screws. You've got to do this carefully if you ever get one of these. There's two little washers on here as well. You don't want them dropping out. Hold it down so I can just pick this screw up. Make sure the washers stay on there. Now, what I wanted to get off is this bar. Let come back in. So, here's different widths. Wider. Narrower on the other side. This is curved. Tends to be more flat. So it's longer. Now actually with this we can put it in on either side. So I've got it there, I've got the wider bit. If I take it off and turn it over, you get the narrow edge. It's so very clever that actually it has a dual setting that you can move about. So therefore you've got something that will set up nicely if you like to do flat spoke shape work. You have something where you can set it up to do curved work. So the narrow side will do that curved position. Just finger tighten these back up again. Going to set the blade up in a minute. So we have our adjustable, a bit tight this side. And we've got to adjust this in a minute to set the back up with the blade. But I can move this up and down. So therefore, I can set position. I could even taper cut it if you like. One of the things we use in here when we do the arm bows is taper cut them to do the peg that goes in. So you have a coarse set and a fine set. So therefore you can vary which side of the spoke shed you use, how heavy a cut you're taking. Just going to put our blade back into here. Got to be a bit careful. It's a little bit sharp this at the moment. These tend to be, I think, a PMV blade in these. So again, a harder metal. Finger tighten these down. Like I said, don't do one side all together and then do the other. Need to get them equal. Good way of finding that out is test the little knobs on here. So this one's a lot lower at the moment. So slack it off, kick it over. Fingertips will tell me. Again, still got the same issue. So tighten one up. Pulls the blade a bit more central, equal amount of material securing it. That's quite important on that one. Last spoke shave I really love. Clifton spoke shave. Now, again, Clifton do a straight spoke shave, but they do something with a rounded section. They do the opposite shape to this. So this is the concave. They do a convex as well. Convex would be great for things like cabriole chair leg or table leg. This has one up. Got to be careful with this again because there is a washer, chip breaker, and blade. So you could blade. Okay. Nice and sharp. So 
I'm going to use that in a second. Let's just put it back together. Quite easy to go. Now, this is bevel down again. That's there. If we go back just to grab that, out of all the smoke shapes, that's the only one that's a bevel up. So, therefore, the blade is facing the other way, a bit used a bit more like a block plank. So, question for the guys that are watching out there how do we sharpen these? Okay. Just going to bring it back down to the other end of the bench. We're going to answer that question. It'd be interesting to see if any of you get that right as an answer or a question for me. It'd be lovely to know. Colwyn does have a question. What you got, mate? We've got a couple of questions. Um, first one from Chris. Can you still buy radius blades for wooden spoke shapes? Rounded blade as in shape blade on the front, Chris? Um, depends on the shape. Now, Veritas do do a curved blade that goes that way, so it might fit. If not, you might find if you've got an old Stanley, you might need to actually buy, and I know with the rider blades will sit for a Stanley one, you might need to get one of those and adjust it. Have a similar fitting. Ben, can you just go to, so Chris, obviously you're watching there. That's a Stanley one. Our rider blades, very similar. Long way. So it might be the fact if it's a similar fitting, depends on the size of it, you might need to shape it yourself if they're not available, but might be possible. I can't promise, okay? Colin? Um, so, yeah, another question. This one's from Colin. Um, hi, Jason. Would a block plane not do the same job as a flat bottom spoke shape? No. Okay. And that's a strong no, isn't it? You could do. Now, I'm able to have even down board material, which is very warped and stuff. I've used a spoke shape. Um, let's go back down to here then, babe. Our chair seat. It's a really good example of, and Colin, we're going to answer it as well. I hope this will give you a few few things. There are certain times, yes, you can get away with using your spoke shape. You might use a block plane to do certain things. Can get in. You can use a block plane because you can swing it a little bit on its side, so you can skew cut with it. You reduce the width of the sole, if you like, the length of it, so you're cutting across it. But it depends on access of what you're doing with the job. So this is cut with a flat spoke shape. But actually, it tapers in on the ends. So there's more cut towards the middle. It would be difficult with a block plane. Likewise, on the chair we've got up on the wall here. So Ben, can you go to one for me now? On the chair we've got here, we have a chamfer that starts at the leg on the back, comes forward, blends back in. So that would be difficult, again, to do with a flat, flat block plane. So with our chair seat, what can we do? First thing, let's just grab a few things out of the way. We'll take our seat out. Our grain direction, if I lean in just a second. I wanted my pencil. It's running front to back. Traditional Windsor chairs from High Wycombe, the seat direction is front to back. There's lots of mixing grain direction on here. So it makes it difficult to cut and work with. We also have, if I move, let's move our arm for a minute. Put that right back down here. It then goes to the front camera just on there. Look how much gap we've got in here. So we've done a lot of shaping with this already. Um, our seats we would use these days traditionally would have been used in ads. So you used to put it on the floor and your hand ads is down. We use an Arbitec. We have a rotary bear. So Ben's, when he's done his arbor tech demos for you, will have shown you that sort of thing. You get the carbide bear cutter. It's really good. Then we need to refine this. So we might start off with an in shape, depending on how much work I've got to do. I would work crossway. To refine that, to build the shape just a little bit more, go back to our spoke shapes. So curve one. Let's have a look at and go on to there. Now, this has got curved sole. I've got the different manufacturers just leading in again, like Nielsen one. Depending on how deep I've gone in here will determine what I'm going to need. Now, like Nielsen one to set up. Nothing at the moment. It's curved bottom. I need to use pin hammer. So gently tap it forward a bit more. It's quite an art. If you get too much, you tap on the back edge of the corner, bring it back a bit takes a little bit of setting up. 
They're not used to. You've got to be very light with your pen hammer. I don't even hold the handle too far back. I use it quite lightly to tap it. You can adjust how much cut you're taking. Now to use this and cut properly, I'd work across the grain. With this one, it's quite nice because this actually matches the curve quite well that I've got. So on here, if I just play around with, move it, if I put my fingers on the top, there's not too much variation or movement or wiggle across it. It doesn't rock. So, maximum curve I've got right here. A uh, lot more movement on that sole because of the curve underneath. Now, to control this a bit more, I might need to come back. I can go diagonally. So, by going diagonally and not straight, I reduce that amount of rock. I can position myself on the sole, find the cut, hold it, and work a bit more diagonally. It takes a bit more effort and concentration because you've actually got to support it more. Next thing on this, concentrate when you do this. And that sounds silly, doesn't it? Um, we've got people where they're there doing this, okay? They're not actually cutting. They're sat on the back of the mouth and the frog on the sole there, right in the back, not doing anything. Got to tilt it forward, find it, and monitor what's happening. Feel is a really good one. So my Lion Nielsen one will match that curve better. Easier for me to control. I can do the hollow section. I can come up over, down the other side. I'm not gonna block your view, so we're gonna turn it around. So we can work downwards, produce our shape. Now, depending on how much curve you've got supported, that's important. Next little thing I need to find, just down the other end. I lift up my board, there it is, look. Go faster juice. What's go faster juice? A little bit of candle wax. Even on a spoke shell, pan plane, really good to do. That sort of action, it reduces friction. So it's really good to help it glide. So push it up over. So you can see how nicely that's supported. Not rocking too much makes life easy. Even the uh, test one can be good. A bit heavy on that side. A bit too much rock at the moment. Uh, I took things apart, got to adjust things. Nice thing with the barrel test with the fine adjust is if you take it out and sharpen it, the blade is pretty much in the same position because you've got those fine adjusters. A little bit more, trying to bring the cut away from one side. A bit too heavy. Bring it back again. And again, do you think I know there is more chance of rocking because of the amount of curve on here? Okay, you can see how this will roll about. I've started going diagonally again. Not dead straight. Straight would be there. So I've got to come across it. So to get into our hollows, those curves are really useful. We're going to use them again probably in a second. I'm Clifton one. Got that round edge. The back of our seat. The grain, as we said, runs down through. So all of this area up through here is end grain fibres. Hope you can see that. Most of you will be able to picture that in your mind of what we have. You can see the grain up through here. These are harder to cut. The middle coming out round, these fibres are gradually getting longer in length towards the middle of the seat. So I'm already thinking about which way I've got to cut those. Now, our Clifton one has that benefit. If I need to just bring it back a little bit. My new set. Like that, right up into this nice curved edge. There's nothing else that we've got on the bench that's going to allow us to get up into this shape. Again, I'm angling. I'm not dead square. I tilt it a bit. I find my cut just playing around with the dip and where we're cutting. If I can work all the way around, clean up my pencil. Let's do another lie and give you a bit of an idea. Hopefully, I think you can see that. Joy with this, you can be really precise and work through. A little bit, just in there. I can even come down this edge. Now this way suggesting on this seat, I need to come back in. 
so I don't block your camera angle. I'm going to gently try and pull it down. But look how I've slowed my pace down because I want to control this because it doesn't feel natural for me. Okay, pull it back up. Get a nice, crisp, clean edge. There's nothing else. And just bring it up. I don't know, hoping you can see we cut this with a little bit of a pencil line. A little mark I've got taken there, a bit of the grain actually there. That's coming across. But actually, we cut it. We haven't scraped it. We haven't torn those fibers. What else are you going to use? You could use a cabinet scraper, but it's harder to control, especially around there. Your orbital sander, you lose that lovely crisp edge on the top. You throw it up over, you soften it. Good quality furniture, nice crisp corners. That shows handmade. So that's quite an important part. So our spoke shave is a way of building that shape. Likewise, even a wooden one, I can use back in here. So it'll work across the grain nicely. That's easier to do. What about our edge? Let's go to this side. Bring it down a little bit. Let's see if I can get your picture for you. So your grain fibers get longer coming out. Our maximum grain length middle. So they come out here, back up through. So with this, I've got to look again at which way I'd want to cut. Now this will go back probably to Colin's question about could you not use a block plane? See if I can give it a bit more picture for you. Just trying to see if we can secure that there. Now one here, Ben, can you go to camera one just for a sec? High point is there. Coming down, the grain gets shorter. Got to come round. So actually, from the maximum width, which is here, chances are I can come that way all the way round to the centre. But this is hollow, rounded. Two different shapes. If I try and get in here with flat one, it will work. Me having a look now, which is which, okay. As long as I've got enough blade protruding, it will get into here. It will be better around here. And again, my angle, I'm not dead straight. Parallel would be there. By angling it, it makes it more supported, easier to work. Come up there and up to there. From here, nothing. Why? Because we've got hollow dishing. So in other words, we are bridging across the front and the back of the sole. It won't drop down. There is definitely no way. I'm going to get in there. So my block plane is not going to touch any of that. It's going to be difficult to do. So there are certain jobs that you definitely can't do and get away with just be a block plane. So this bit for me to get into that curve, I did my hollow or rounded one. Go to there again, angling it. Adds more support, reduces that risk of any chatter. We can come along. Need to change. Now if I try and go around here, but then I know I'd probably manage. I can concentrate and position it where I need to be supported on that mouth, the cutting edge, and hold it. We're a little bit controlled. I've done this quite a few years, so I hope so. I'd be better off changing to a flat one, and it'll be so much easier to come round, so I can extend our shape, build anything. If we wanted to do our chamfered edge on the inside here, I can tilt it, I can start central, gradually work it back so it becomes longer and wider. Really good way of actually producing hollow curve. Well, definitely our curve spoke shapes definitely get a lot more use. So this is part of the back, one of the chairs. Put that in there, need to just support it. Let's see where we are for the picture. And drop that down a little bit. We'll get this position, then we can see what Colwyn's got for me. What you got, Colwyn? Um, so Frederick's asking, are there different uh, blades for side and end grain? No. Okay. One blade will do both. Best advice I can give you, depends on the density of the material. Think about the hardness of the material. Pine is easier to work with, so you can have a lower cutting angle. You could get away with 25. We can get all into metals, if you like, as well, because if I go with the Veritas, I think these now have a PMV blade in. If they have a PMV blade, it's a harder metal material. You need a minimum of 30 edge degree cutting edge on there. If you go too narrow, it's going to be too weak. It will be the metal is more brittle, so it will chip out a little bit. So 30 degrees will be better. If you go down to 
the A2 that's in your line, Nielsen, you can actually drop down maybe to 25. If you're having lots of problems with hand grade stuff, and, okay, before we do that, I didn't do, I suppose. Let's put this back in. Now, the seat now, hand grain, all of this. Up front. Got to drop in there, see where we are. That looks all right in the camera, please. Got to come up. Now, if I want to cut this as hand grain, what do I need? First of all, what shape I've got? I've got a curve. So, as in rounded, not hollow, flat one. So, I can come around there. We could go, let's have a look. There are test one flat, one hurt, it's just got fine adjusted, means I don't need to get my hammer. We could work along. So, now, this is all band saw cut still. So, I would do lots of pencil lines. Hopefully, help you see it more on the camera. So that will work nicely there. Same spoke shape. I can come all the way around from that side grain, pull it up over, will travel nicely. If you're doing lots of end grain, that low angle one we said about, the only thing we might have with this, too much mouth might be open. Now, it'd be nice, let's just clean this off. Let's see if we can do. Guys that have been watching me play with a shooting board, these are hand grain shavings. So you're actually cutting a shaving. Easier to do with the low angle spoke shape because the blade is set dead flat at the bottom. This is lower than you'd even get in your block plane. So therefore, easier to work up front. Need to tighten up. I'm a bit too heavy on my cut at the moment, which is why we get the noise. So how do I adjust my cut? Unlike the other ones, we haven't got that fine adjuster. We have those two screws. Remember we took that bar off the front? I need to bring it back down just that little bit. Find the screw head. Tricky to do. So we're going to sit it on there. Tighten them up. One. Get off the seat of it. Two. That's finger tight just for a second. Better. So I brought the bar back in line more with the cutting tip instead of being a little bit higher. And grain. So I kind of bluntly said, no, there isn't a different blade. You could look at possibly a different type of spoke shape. Low angle can be really good. Remember, wooden ones are low angle. Downside with these can be the fact that the holes get very worn, the blades get worn out. Blades in these are quite thick, three, four mil thick on the back here. So quite a thick section, can still be quite good to get in. But I love this for coming up here. I don't know many things that will produce an ingrained shaving like that on a curve. Really good. And cut wise, Little lines you can see that were on the band saw cut, I've still got to get. But actually, that's cut end grain in elm. Quite nice today. Therapeutic in ways. So let's put our seat out of the way. Let's go to that back. Top rail from our chair, we've got hung up on the wall, so the comb back. Have our rail in. My bit of oak just in underneath, just to support it. That'll work. What have we got? We've got a curve in here. But actually, it's quite a shallow curve, depending on where we hit. Well, I know some curve. I can't remember how heavy I've got this one. A bit heavy one side. Again, to reduce the chatter, angle it. Keep it parallel. You've got a plane direction. But to think about which way we're going. So the fibres on here, we'll try and show them it. They're coming across. This was cut out of a block. So we've got the bark edge either end. One there, there's one the other end. We cut this out in the band saw, it's one piece of wood. So, got to come there. Can I try coming this way? That's harder to do. Force wise, it will also tear the fibers out. I'm not going to probably show on the camera, but I've got white fleck in here. I know I've torn the fibers. So, 
very difficult. To work, you've got to go one direction. You've got to go from there and then. So we get our curve, we'll fit in there. The low angle one. Even this, because I've got the short bar on the front, I can tilt the spoke shade forward just a little bit to lift the blade up. We can still cut. It's pushing the luck of where I'm getting into. But I can just about manage that. So depends on the type of spoke shape. Whereas if I go what I would class as traditionally with a flat, I've got to have the blade a lot further forward because we're now bridging across the sole of the bottom. We're lifting it up a little bit. It's supported. So quite important to get the right type of spoke shape for that job. Okay, so... Let's move that out of the way. Prime for your table. Shallow curve, you've got to work from either end down to the middle. This one's a little bit unusual because of the grain. You can see the lines. These come out this way. So actually, cutting that way up. So I've got to start here. Cut that. Come all the way along. I can stop. Uh, this one would have to be joined in. So you've got to work for either end. The minute you start trying to come back up, you're going to break it out, tear it. No different than when you do some turning. You go the wrong way, you come up here on spindle work, breaks the fibres. So exactly the same on this. This would need a shallow curve. Too big a curve, you've got the problems of it rocking. Okay, let's go down to our board down here then. So we're going to lose our ply board. Too sharpen can be an issue. Why? Because this is a much shorter blade. So let's have a look what we got. At that. So there are chest one. Glasses on. So these I sharpen, they have a 25 degree primary bevel, which is on the back here. The sharpened edge is 30. I tend to keep these at 30. Let's colour that in. Nice black line. I think you can probably see that. That's good. We've got a number of different honing guides on here. We've been through some of these with you with some of the previous videos. Case of selecting something now, my most basic honing guide. Clipsdale honing guide. Problem with this. This has got to go in, and I can't remember what the protrusion length is. I don't know if I've got my board and underneath. We're not going to get enough. So I was just trying to see if we've got the sharpening station on there. It needs to come filed a bit more. So the problem with this is you've got nothing to hold. Got nothing to hold, got nothing square, nothing to grip. It can be really problematic. I'm not a great one these days trying to go freehand. I might get away with it. But what you tend to do is round this over more. That can cause problems because these are beveled down in the spoke shaves. Too much rounded belly underneath. You're not cutting anything. You're sat on the belly. So it's quite an important part to get this quite accurate. I do a number of different honing guides. And here we've got this fits on the ultimate edge. Um, I'm a real fan of this for spoke shaves. And that sounds a bit weird, doesn't it? That I can have this just for a spoke shave. That's got holder. We have... A setup length, I need to come forward a little bit. Gonna be fighting with this one, look. Ooh. Done a lot of work with this little blade. Another nice thing I like with doing this, bring it forward a bit more. Get it level, so I can set my lump. 25, we're on, good. Get it square, it feels better. This will go in, slide it all the way through. That'll give me enough to hold that, that I can go from there back and forwards. We need something just to act the lubricant. Got the blade really in this the wrong way around. The knob should be the other side, but for a second we've got it in there. Let's go. So this is 1200 grit on the scary sharpening station. Why have they got it on here? Made it easy to set up and sharpen with you on the bench. Um, not too much mess. I don't need water stands, don't need the water, don't need the trough for them to sit in. So also the fact of what we're going to do next. So don't need a lot of pressure. I just want to touch this back up. As long as I haven't damaged it, it'd be really good. One thing we didn't show you, I suppose, on here 
this is adjustable. This moves. There is a scale. So the reason for 25, I've got a preset mark. I can come up to 30 and know that's nice and accurate. Okay, so while we're just doing that, I'm just going to do the back. So I take it exactly as it is. I can hold the honing guide, makes it easier. We can do the back edge. Colin, what you got? Um, so Aubrey's just asking, can you hone the Veritas um, blades um, in the Mark II guide? Okay. All right, we're going to do. All right, I'm going to show you why. So on here, this is the lever strut. We can pull this towards us. This is just taking off that micro bear. So again, if you think back to the sharpening videos we've done, look at that. It all explains. So our lever strut, we've got some honing compound on. So strut paste. Polish that off. Get rid of that minute wear edge. So I'm hoping. So you've got a nice reflected bit on the front there, if I bring it up. Okay, so on that camera. Okay. That should look good. Nice flat back. Pretty sharp. Sure. Got to be a bit careful. I managed to do this the other week and cut my finger putting it back in. Again, goes in upside down. Just going to put it there. All right, we'll put that back together. Mark II Veritas Honing Guide. Depends on the spoke shape. The normal problem with most spoke shape is they're a bit short. So any blade, let's go. Let's choose one of those. Might just about have enough length with this. The blade I've just sharp been used quite a lot. So I know it's quite short. Now the Veritas Honing Guide has set up jig. That bit. Main body. Two adjustable bolts either side. We have a bar which allows the blade to be fitted through, if I can show you, down in there. We want a 30 degree bevel. So on here, we have our scale on the bar. I'm going middle line, which is yellow dot, it says 30. That's what I want to do. So this bit on here, undo that little knob, this slides, I can move this up to 30 degrees. That's locked in. That has a dovetail holder, will fit onto there. So it slides across our blade. Ooh, under two inches wide. So there's a scale on here, so I can look at that just to get a guide. Turn it over. Now, this blade is quite new. I know this is new because this is the PMV one, not the older metal they used to have, which I think was an A1 in these. That will go to there. So we can pin it in place. Now, it does depend on the size of the blade you've got. Not so much the width, but the length. Because actually on here, we are just securing on the bar that's clamped down. It's difficult to show you. So this bar is just gripped it, which you can say, well, if it just grips it, that's fine. That's enough. As you wear it down, it's going to get shorter. So on that one, we're held in there. So we'll probably get away with it. Going to do pen. Make it look a bit more obvious. We can set it on. New one here. I'm a real fan of this. I love this. Thumbs can go in here and underneath. I actually put them on this lower plate. Fingertips up on there. Don't need too much pressure. Slip my thumb. Get it off the wheel. So this is 1,200 grit paper I'm on at the moment. So there we've got our bear. Back over two and a half thousand. So you can get away with it on there, but it depends on the length of the blade. We might try this bounce around a minute. That's the back. We can flatten that. We know we've got to do our lever strop. Lever strop is just really about taking off that micro bear produced on there. Pull it back. Polish that up. Nice edge again. So we now still have a nice clean 25 in behind. 30 is a small flat. As it gets longer, we need to grind that back, redress it, get it back to something clean, then start again. So we don't want that 30 becoming too much as a, a thickness of width. So that's quite easy to do. Now, we you going to hear about this a little bit because if I go with something a bit shorter in length, 
So the difference on here is that it can be a real fight to get this all the way over. Just going to load that temporary. Let's have a look. Our guide. Bring that up. So tighten that up so we're in the same place. Now we're going to adjust our blade forward. Let's see if we quite got enough. Just gripping that. So the Lion Nielsen blade. Bring it back in. You can just see it down in here, the silver bar. That's gripping up to here. So it does hold it, but you're getting a bit short. That's what we're holding on from there. You need something enough to grip it to hold it square while you polish it. So quite an important part there is enough grip. So wheel work, my favourite one, and this is weird. This is a combination of things. So in reality, what we got, we got simple clip style honing guide. They're a test made this. They still do it. It's a small part stick. It is magnetic. So it'll pick the blade up. So my spoke shaves in here have one of these set up, blade on, down to a set point. So in other words, this lives in here. We leave it in the room. I shout at the boys and tell them, no, they can't have it. Okay, has to stay in there because I've worked out my length nicely. I've set it up. There's an adjustable screw on the top. So it sits there nicely. So I find that really quick and simple that I can take them out sharp them up. The magnets are strong enough to hold it, makes it quick and easy, depending on the length, but this won't fit into this. Okay, that was for the Mark 1 honing guide they did that. Works nicely in here just for the two magnets. It will support the blade enough. It, I find it quick and easy to sharpen those on. All right, so we can do the back. That gets rid of any bare, a little bit more to go. We need to polish that back edge up a bit more than that. So two and a half bells, and it's actually, in reality, polishing it. So again, if you haven't seen the scary sharpening stuff, have a look. We did that as a video a while back. The reason I like this for doing what we're doing now, it keeps the back of this blade nice and flat. It doesn't deviate because my water's stone all wear, so this is better keeping things nice and flat and I want this to sit flat it will also give me a better polish on the back a bit more shine and then we can do never stop we can pull it down through something nice and sharp we're getting quite a polished area on there bring it back in a bit look okay so now we threw a question at you earlier we have that we have that which one should we go to, Pink? Bring them up to. So, little blade, low angle, curved one. How to sharpen them? Did you get any answers, Cohen? No. Okay. I didn't think you would. I don't know. I wasn't sure. I was hoping I might. So, how do I sharpen these? This thing, really tricky to sharpen because it is so small. So, Ben, let's have a look on. Quite short as a blade. Let's compare it, if you like, to what we've just done. Definitely different length. That's quite a nice bevel. So I do find with this, if I need to do the top, I can sit it on that. So I just use a little bit of finger pressure. You can see it tilt. Need just a little bit of stuff on there. Have to go up straight on here. If I want to sharpen the bevel edge, I can tilt it and producing a 25 degree angle on this, a bit lower. We can go to there. 1200. Two and a half bells, and we can do the same. Nice and gently with my fingertip. Now, weird thing I'm not doing is coming forward and backwards. I'm actually using the side. So, lengthwise. Find that easier to do with this in control. I haven't got anything else I can hold it with. Would my magnetic one do? I've got to reset it, but yeah, I suppose we could put it in there. It'll sit in nicely, but I find that quite good. The other major way I like to sharpen these, 
just the back. So I turned it right over. I polished that back edge up. So I'm more likely if I come to sharpen this and I've got to take it out, I actually will just do the back. Flatten it off, polish it up, get it nice and clean. That we can do. That on there, push it along. So leather strop to the top, pull it back through. Polish it up. That gives me something really sharp. actually putting any pressure behind there so gives us a good sharp edge to do that i was going to shave the hairs but I'm not kind of allowed now so go with that gives us a good sharp edge what about i'm making mayhem on here now though. what about that clifton one the problem with this and the guy who asked earlier about this curb blade sums this up beautifully because how do we sharpen this you could do this now when i initially got this i went to town and really buffed this up i don't know ben if we can do put you a close-up camera All right nice shiny surface so i've done a little work on there to get that right i don't want to deviate too much away from the shape on this so i want to keep the shape as near as i can so it actually matches the shape of the mouth don't want to alter it so it's quite a problematic thing on making sure they match. So with this, how to sharpen. Once I've done that top edge and I've got it nicely shaped with my bevel, polished up through, as long as I'm careful with what I do with this, so in reality, don't drop it on the floor, don't bang things against it. You're working with it on a hollow area like the seats or things, you're less likely to hit maybe a big knot or something. It depends on what you're working on. I can get away with just dressing the back. So I take a bit of material for here, 1200, two and a half. I'm not actually even going near that top edge, which is going to alter the shape. Just do that back edge. Stop. Onto there. We can pull it down through. What I want to do top. I can easily do that just on the lever strut pulling towards me. That's not going to alter the shape. But I'll keep the profile nicely. It will give me a much sharper edge than I can get off trying to do it. I'm maintaining a good clean bevel all the way down. So I'm not going to round it over. Not going to alter that shape too much, which is really important. Okay. Hopefully. Cohen, you got any other questions? Anything you know? Bit of a weird subject about shapes. I couldn't live without them for the things we actually do in here, the seats, the tables, and different things that I've made over the years. Got to have. I combine different manufacturers. I don't think that's a bad thing. Okay, I know Linus and Veritas, you can't put them in the same box. They, they don't like it. All right, but different ones, different curves can be beneficial. Shallower curve can be really good for things like the seats. Steeper curve will allow me to get into something like armbow. Okay, it will get into this curve. If I go too shallow, it doesn't cut. It bridges across it. If I do the outside, I want something flat. Nice to do. Um, I'm going to get those guys that say, but I've got a belt sander. Okay, this is therapeutic, making shavings. It, it, hand tools are a beautiful thing to play with. Now, we said you about the Clifton one. Let's just grab, so when we're not using, I put it back in its box. Protect it so you store it safely. You can get things like plain socks. I know there's some socks out there for things like spout shaves in here. We hang them up on the rack. So they're kept apart. You're not banging them together. Don't just throw them back in that toolbox. Right, okay. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. If you have, go and hit that thumbs up button. It makes us feel good. We we'll get a little bit of feedback. I mean, we do these videos. And it's like, okay. If you'd like to, I know there's a hardcore bunch of you that obviously watch our videos. Go and hit that subscribe button. Quite a few of you must already be tuning in day in, day out, which is fantastic. If you've enjoyed it, maybe your friends will enjoy it. So share it. Okay? We, we won't charge you. I promise. Okay? So thanks for watching. Next week, we should sit here laughing. Now I'm in trouble. All right? Next week, what we got? Colwyn's doing questions and answers on Tuesday and looking at things with ring tools. Me and Craig are going to start a five-part project on how to make a special garden chair because summer's here.
So we will see you then. Thank you all very much. All right. Nice to see you. Bye-bye.